Jesus. Yes, we are back. As you know, these days the network is not good. We have to be on VPN. VPN is poor. Sometimes it cuts itself off. Yeah, but shall still do the work of the Lord. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We are back <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You know, the network is so poor. VPN, you have to use VPN. VPN sometimes goes off. Sometimes it comes back. Sometimes it pauses. So it's not easy. That's why even many of us are not able to access this program. I see we have very few people who are watching. Consider, I mean, in comparison to what we always have here, many people are watching always. Maybe people are not even able to join Facebook. Amen. But we thank God for those who are watching and we know that you are going to be used to take this message everywhere. Amen. So we are back. Share the link again with everybody. Amen. So St. Paul was telling us, 1 Corinthians 4, answering the question, why do we need this talk? Why do we need to know about St. Paul? Amen. Why does do, do you and I need to know about St. Paul? 1 Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 14. I am writing you to you this. I'm writing you. I'm writing you. I am writing you this. Not to shame you, but I demonish you as my beloved children. Amen. I am writing to you this as my beloved children. We are children of God. We are children of Mother Mary. We are children of St. Joseph. We are children of St. Jude. We have many saints that we belong to. Amen. But there is a special saint here. Amen. That the Bible is telling us. We are his children. Amen. So many things will change in your life. The moment you know about this guy. So many things will happen to you. To your spirituality. To your family. The moment you know him. Amen. And the moment you come to know him, you fall in love with him. You begin to fall in love with his letters. The moment you fall in love with the scripture, with his letters, he will give you the fire to love the Bible. To make it the word of God. Amen. And you will begin to seek for his intercession. So, verse 15. Even if you have had many countless guides to Christ, yet... You do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to be imitators of me. Amen. St. Paul has become our father through the gospel. Remember, he says that the same Lord who, who worked the ministry to the Jews in Peter, Amen. St. Paul somewhere he says someone can, can go on Google and get that scripture. It is somewhere but I have forgotten. St. Paul says that he who worked the ministry in Peter to the Jews is the same God. He is the same Christ who has worked the ministry in me to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Can someone Google it and post it here? Someone Google that. Google that. Those who know how to Google very fast. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So St. Paul says that the same Christ who worked in who worked in Christ in Peter, Simon Peter, our first Pope, who worked in Peter in ministry to the Jews, is the same Christ who worked in me in ministry to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The Gentiles are the people who came to believe in Christ through the preaching of St. Paul and many of his companions. The Gentiles were non-Jews. The Gentiles were not part of the chosen race. As St. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter, I see, yes, 1 Peter, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, 
Praise the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 2. I think chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. From verses what? From verses 9. Amen. You need to know this if you want to know more about Paul and his ministry. 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 9. I'm, I'm yet to get someone who knows how to open the Bible from the phone book. I mean from the phone and then you post these scriptures on the phone. I pray that Holy Spirit may give us one there. So 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen race. The, letter to the, the, the letters of St. Peter. 1 Peter, 2 Peter and I think... Is there a third Peter? I think yes, there is third Peter. Third Peter. Is it third Peter? No, it's not there. It is one Peter and a second Peter. Amen. Saint Peter wrote this letter to the church in in what? In Palestine. Amen. Saint Peter writes this letter to the church in where? In Palestine. The Palestines were mainly Jews. Amen. These people whom the Lord had whom St. Paul had said that the same God who worked in me a ministry, who worked in Peter a ministry to the Jews, is the same God who has worked in me a ministry to the Gentiles. That time they were doubting him. They were doubting, is this guy really an apostle? <laughs> Amen. They were doubting, is this guy an apostle? Is this guy really sent by God? How come he was not part of the term? That's what they were saying. The Jews, even including the, the main apostles, they were doubting the apostleship of Paul. Amen? I don't know what they are doubting about your life. They may be doubting many things about your life. May be doubting about your capacity to be an influential person. Doubting about your capacity to be a mean to live a meaningful life. Doubting your capacity, your charisma. Amen? To be a servant of God. Doubting your capacity to live a married life, have a wife, have children, have a husband. To have a life of financial freedom and independence. Maybe they are doubting that in your life. They doubted the apostleship of Paul. Amen? But God had no doubt about his ability. God had no doubt about the ability of Paul to become a successful apostle. And in fact, he became one of the most successful apostles, if not the most successful apostle. Indeed, to me, he was the most successful apostle. Look at the New Testament that has 27 books. 27 books in the New Testament. Of the 27 books, 14 of them are attributed to St. Paul. Hallelujah. This is the man who had, whose apostleship, whose call had been doubted. If God gives us more time, maybe tomorrow, any other day, we shall talk more about his call and many things. I have many books I want to do reference to. One of them is here. St. Paul, our ancestor in faith. St. Paul, our ancestor in faith. It is very small, but so, so efficacious. It's great. Has so much wisdom. Has so much anointing. Amen. Another one is this. St. Paul, apostle and martyr. By Igino Giordani. Amen. Another book about Paul that I have that I will share with you is Saul turned Paul. Saul turned who? Paul. The life and mission of Paul. The life and mission of who? Of Paul. And many others that I have here. This one is common to many of you. A man who is sent what? Paul. One of the best books about Paul. And one of the best meditation books that you can ever meet in your life. A man who is sent Paul. I have all of them. We shall share more about them. Amen. So they doubted the apostleship of Paul. Amen. But God his master had no doubt about his power. He had no doubt about his potential. He had no doubt about the gifts that he had given him. I want to show you my brother and my sister who is watching me. The world may doubt you. <laughs> Your family may doubt you. Everybody may write you off. Like they had written of St. Paul. 
Amen. But the Lord has not written you off. Amen. So St. Peter was saying, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. Amen. A people of his own. These were the Jews. But the Gentiles were not part of this. But still God wanted them to come and be part of this wonderful experience. And that's why he made a ministry to the Jews through Paul. May the Lord make a ministry in you. To a certain category of people. May the Lord make a ministry in you to a certain category of people. Maybe he may make a ministry in you to the youth. He may make a ministry in you to the married. He may make a ministry in you to the singles. He may make a ministry in you to, to for this nation, Uganda. He may make a ministry in you to, to, for your family. He may make a ministry in you to Rwanda, to Kenya, to Nairobi, to everywhere, to the world, to Europe. Amen. Praise the Lord. St. Paul, pray for us. St. Paul, pray for us. Hallelujah. So they doubted the apostleship of Paul. Amen. But somewhere he tells us, he tells us that he went on to become, to become one of the greatest apostles. Let us read there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then I go back to what I was talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So I want to thank, thank all of you who have joined me this night for this St. Paul Memorial Lecture. I have had issues with my network. That's why I cannot even be on Zoom. And uh, we are here. And I know we are, may not be so many because of the network issues, but at least there are some the Lord is touching. And he will use you to touch many others like he used St. Paul. So look at this man whose apostleship, whose ministry, whose call had been doubted. What does he say? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He talks about the resurrection of the Lord. How Jesus resurrected and then he appeared to many people. The man, he begins with talking about now, verse 1. Now I am reminding you, brothers, uh, of the gospel I preached to you, which you, you indeed received, in which you also stand. Verse 2. Through it, you are also being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures. We are reading 1 Corinthians 15. That he appeared to Cephas. So Jesus, when he rose, he appeared to Simon Peter, who was called Cephas. To the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Verse 7, which I wanted. After that, he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Actually, I wanted verse 8. So after that, he appears to James, that is the resurrected Jesus, the risen Lord. Then verse 8. Last of all, as one born abnormally, he appeared to me. Listen, listen to the humility of St. Paul. Amen. Last of all, as one born abnormally, he appeared to me. Even if St. Paul was taken as someone who had been born abnormally. Even if St. Paul was taken as an accident. Many people regarded him as an accident. As a killer, as a murderer, as a persecutor, as a loss. As an accident, God still appeared to him in his abnormality. Amen. Jesus still appeared to him in his abnormality. Is there something that is abnormal in your life? Is there something that they see as weird in your life? Are there some characters that they see as weird in your marriage, in your relationship, in your life, in your spiritual life? The Lord still has special interest in you. The Lord still regards you as his child. The Lord still cherishes you. The Lord will still bless you. The Lord will still use you in your weakness. Amen. This is what this great apostle is teaching us. Praise the Lord. This is what this great apostle is teaching us. One 
Corinthians 15 verse 8. Last of all, as someone born abnormally, he appeared to me. My brother, my sister, stop crying. Stop lamenting. Stop being in sorrow and depressed. Thinking you are a victim. You are an accident. You are seeing that you are a sign of sorrow. That you are a misfortune. That you are not meant to prosper. That you are not meant to live a holy life. That you are not meant to settle and have a successful, meaningful life. You are supposed to have it despite your weaknesses. Amen? That is why he says, last of all, as someone born abnormally, he appeared to me. That is why the same guy, St. Paul, whom I'm talking about tonight, he talks about the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7. Amen? When you get time, go there. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 to verse 10. He talks about Power in weakness. Power in weakness. <laughs> Amen. This one may confuse you. How can there be power in weakness? Saint Paul who knew his weaknesses. Amen. But much more he knew the strength of God. He knew the power of God. He talks about power in weakness. Amen. So even if you are someone who had been regarded as inferior, amen, that's what, that's what you are going to read, to read just after that. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 8 and the following there, inferior. He was called an inferior apostle. After some time, they acknowledged he was an apostle. Amen. After some time, these people, including even the main apostles, they acknowledged that he was an apostle. Amen. But even after acknowledging that he was an apostle, they called him an inferior apostle. Have you been called inferior? <laughs> you are called the weakling of your family. The most weakest person in your prayer group. Even you, you believe that. That you are the most weakest person in your prayer group. That you are the most weakest person in your family. You even believe that you are the most inferior person. St. Paul was called the inferior apostle. Did it stop him from writing almost half of the New Testament? Did it stop him from evangelizing the whole world? Some cities are named after St. Paul, like Sao Paulo in Brazil. One of the greatest cities in the world, Sao Paulo, St. Paul. Amen. How many churches are named after Paul? One of them, the greatest of them all. Is St. Paul Basilica. Basilica Santa Pauli. St. Paul Basilica outside Rome. One of the best churches you can ever visit. I was blessed in my nothingness. To visit that church in Rome. In September 2019. I went there. I saw where Paul was martyred. Where he gave up his life for the Lord. I saw the chains. That they used to tie him. What he calls. The chains of apostles. Of apostleship. They are there in a transparent box. You can see them. His remains are in John Lateran. John Lateran or St. Mary Major. One of them. Because they got them. Amen. So he was called inferior. Amen. He was looked at as someone who had been born abnormally. St. Paul. But that did not come to his head. Amen. He knew the truth. Called power in weakness. One time we shall preach about it. Power in weakness. Amani munafu. Wadori munafu. Wadogeza kwa kusome sana ene zigana. Wadogeza kwa kusima ene zigana. Nogeza kwa kusome chika machwa muka wayenga tovi tegera. Nogeza kwa kuwaguza mbala muvu na yenga to waguza. Omuni mo vigani. Ufu mo vigani. Bolichimu chigani. Na yenga waku kambi. Ntori munafu na wane chukumera kumutwe. Omuka makugambe, wali wa mani mbunafu. St. Paul talks about power in weakness. That is the whole topic of another day maybe. Power in weakness. For more of that, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 
pretend power in weakness. Amen. May God give you that power in your weakness. May God fill us with that power in our weakness. May the Lord still work through us even in our weakness. Amen. Let's continue because I have just about 15 minutes and I finish. Power in weakness. Amen. Power in weakness. Actually, he also talks about it somewhere in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26, St. Paul. We are giving a Pauline memorial lecture on this feast day of St. Paul. St. Paul, actually, I'm who I am because of his intercession. I remember one time I went to Mother Mary and cried to her. Mother Mary, please help me. There are many weaknesses that I have. I feel I'm praying, but still so many things are not right in my life. That was around 2014. Amen. I, my life was nothing, meaningless, no, of no significance, of no influence at all. I was like a victim, it's an accident, a sign of sorrow. Everybody had written me off, including my family. I went to Our Lady and cried to her, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And you know what she told me? She said, God sent Paul. Amen. She told me, God sent Paul. That's when I came to know about this guy. And I read about him. I bought books about him. And as I read about him, I got inflamed with the fire of St. Paul. What he talks about, what St. John Chrysostom talks about. Amen. What St. John Chrysostom talks about. Let me read this quotation by St. John Chrysostom. St. John Chrysostom is one of the early doctors of the church. One of the most significant figures in the Catholic church of all time. He lived in the third century, long ago, 300 AD. He was such a special person. Some of the letters and encyclicals he wrote, I mean the letters he wrote, some of the writings he wrote about the doctrine, about the truth are still revised even up today. They are still part of our doctrine. They are still used as a reference. He was such a special person, St. John Chrysostom. One of the doctors of the church. You need to know about him. But he was a Pauline in spirit and, and everything. Amen. <laughs> he was a Pauline. Kabisa. Actually when St. John Chrysostom was preaching. Because he had great love for St. Paul. And he always invoked him. And he fell in love with his letters. And his examples. He loved St. Paul crazy. That when St. John Chrysostom was preaching on the podium, St. Paul would appear on his right hand side visibly and he would see him and then he would just lecture to the people through the mouth of St. John Chrysostom. So St. Paul would, would preach to people through the mouth of St. Paul of St. John Chrysostom. What's the day the scripture I was talking about? Thank you for posting. It is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26. Thank you so much for posting. But it is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26. Power in weakness. Amen. So, so when I got to know about St. Paul, I fell in love with men of, of, with so much about him. One of them was his letters. He gave me the grace to love his letters. 14 of them, we shall have a day for them. To talk about them. The Pauline letters. Oh my God, they are special. They are special. So what did St. John Chrysostom say? He says, I'm reading from this book called A Man to St. Paul. And all the books I'm showing you, I have them on our OLSG catalog. If you need them, contact us. We shall get them for you. So what did St. John Chrysostom say? He said, Every time I quote, every time I read, some of St. Paul's writings, that is a, those are the Pauline letters in the Bible. I feel deeply moved, all inflamed, and full of holy fervor. End of the quotation. Can I give it again? The quotation is like this, by St. John Chrysostom. Every time I read some of St. Paul's writings, I feel deeply moved. All, all inflamed and full of holy fervor. 
What happens in the life of St. John Chrysostom whenever he would read the letters of St. Paul? Three things would happen. Number one, he would be deeply moved to act upon what Paul was writing about. Number two, he would be inflamed. What, what, is, what does it mean to be inflamed in spirituality? To be inflamed in spirituality is to be set on fire. Amen? To be set on fire. Are you moved when you read the Pauline letters? Are you moved when you read the Bible, the scriptures? Are you set on fire when you read the scriptures? One time Jesus was talking to these people on the road to Emmaus, the Emmaus apostles, Luke chapter 24, verse 32. Verse what? 32. What happened? When he was speaking to them, Bible says their hearts were burning like a fire. As I preach, is your heart burning like a fire? As you attend the church service, the prayer meetings, the fellowships, the Holy Mass and the Word of God is being preached, even here on, on YouTube, on Facebook, does your, are you moved by the message? Are you set on fire? Are you filled with Holy Father? If that is not happening, we call on the intercession of St. Paul for you. Amen. Seek his intercession, he'll do that for you. So he says, every time I read some of Paul's writings, I feel deeply moved, all inflamed, and full of holy fervor. No one, I can assure you this, no one has helped me to fall in love with scripture. No one and no one has helped me to fall in love with scripture more than St. Paul. And our lady. St. Paul and our lady are the, my teachers. They have been my teachers from day one. I've never been in a Bible school, not even one day. Not, not even in any place. But through their intercession, through their help, through their guidance, through their mentorship, I can also say I am who I am because of them. Amen. Power in weakness. Brother Dale, where are you? Power in weakness as we come to close. Five minutes remaining. We close our Pauline Memorial Lecture. Day one. <laughs> I'm going to make them a series now. Amen. <laughs> we are going to make them a series. Pauline Memorial Lectures. Day one is tonight. Tomorrow or another day. Day two, day three, day four. Because there's so much to talk about this wonderful saint. And I pray for you, for many of you, that one day you may go to Rome and see the very place where he gave up his life for the Lord. You see the place where they cut off his head. And the moment they cut his head, it bounced three times. Saying Jesus. Can you imagine the head alone, not with the trunk? Not with this? It bounced. Jesus. 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 And the moment it would touch the ground, a fountain would come. A fountain of water. In the city of fountains called Rome. Amen. And that place is still there up to now when you visit. You go there, they take you there at the place of the three fountains. Praise the Lord. St. Paul is special. We need to know him. We need to know him. We need to love him. We need to read his letters. We need to imitate his virtues. We need to follow his examples. We need to know the story of his life. And by doing so, we shall glorify God. Amen. So as I end tonight's talk, day one, power in weakness is what I'm ending with. 1 Corinthians chapter what? Chapter 1, Brother Deo, you can post. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verses 26 to 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verses 26 to 30. Amen. I just read and I will not explain so much because of time. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from 26 to 30. Consider your own calling. St. Paul is writing to you and me. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you are powerful. 
Not many of you are of noble birth. Amen. When I was called, I was not powerful. And I can't say I'm powerful now, but at least God, God is using me somehow. I thank him. Amen. Consider your own calling, my brothers and sisters. Not many of you are wise by human standards. Amen. Number two, not many of you are powerful. Not many of you are of noble birth. This is a summer of my life, of your life. When the Lord calls us, we are not powerful, we are powerless. Amen. We are not wise. <laughs> Amen. We are lost. We are not that we are born from special families, no. Verse 27. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world. God chose the foolish of the world as I end day one of St. Paul Memorial Lectures. God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. Are you taken as foolish by your boyfriend? He calls you foolish or your girlfriend calls you foolish? Your father, your mother call you foolish? Your uncles, your aunties, your in-laws call you foolish? Who is calling you foolish? Or even yourself, you think you are foolish. God chooses the foolish. Amen? Power in weakness that St. Paul talks about. Rather, verse 27, rather God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. Are you weak? The Lord is saying, I still choose you, my daughter, even in your weakness. Are you weak? The Lord says, I still choose you, anoint you, bless you, heal you, and will use you even in your weakness. Amen. Rather, God chose the, 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 what? the weak of the world to shame the strong. There may be many strong people that want to shame you. There may be many strong people after your life, after your marriage. I don't know what they are trying to destroy in your life, and you think they are strong. St. Paul is saying, God will choose you in your weakness. Verse 28, and God chose the lowly and despised of the world. Many of us are despised. Many of us are lowly, but God is choosing you through the intercession of this wonderful saint, St. Paul. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who count for something. Amen. We'll get time and meditate more about that. Power in weakness. As I close, because time is on my case. We go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Last of all, verse 8. As someone born abnormally, he appeared to me. May the Lord appear to you even in your abnormalities. Some of you cannot give birth because you have abnormal issues. Ish, I mean, so many things taking place in your tubes, in your ovaries, in your oh, whatever. They are saying you have so many abnormal abnormalities in your body. I can assure you, you will give birth in the name of Jesus. You will have children in the name of Jesus. No matter what abnormalities the doctors may have found in you. Amen. Even your abnormality in the mind, whatever it is. The Lord says, I will still appear to you. I will still call you. I will still use you. Verse 9. Are we following you guys? Am I running in vain? Or you are following? Can you say amen if you are following? Verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. Amen. Look at the humility of Paul. For I am the least of the apostles. Not fit. To be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God. I am who I am. And his grace. Has not been ineffective in me. Indeed I have toiled hard. Than all of them. Not I however. But the grace of God. That is with me. Nobody talks about grace more than St. Paul. Nobody teaches about grace 
more than Saint Paul. He knew what grace is. Yari amanye ne machechi. He knew what grace is. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to do about grace. We shall talk more about grace in our successive talks. Grace, 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 grace. Amen. He has said by the grace of God, I am who I am. As we end tonight's session, may the grace of the Lord come upon me, come upon you and me. May the grace of the Lord come upon all who have been watching today. May the grace of the Lord come upon all who have followed day one of St. Paul Memorial Lectures. May the message that you have received, may the grace of God help you to understand it more. May the grace of God help you to meditate more about this message, message that you have received. And even those who are going to watch the videos after. May the grace of God transform your life and transform my life from a weakling to a strong man and woman. May the grace of God transform you and me who are despised and we become the greatest of all in Christ Jesus. May the grace of God make you a super person in Jesus' name. May the grace of God touch your family and transform your family forever. May the grace of God working through the intercession of St. Paul make you a champion. May the grace of God that St. Paul so much talks about transform you from being despised, counted as a loss, to being the most influential person in your family, to being the most influential member of your community, to being a great, a great apostle, teacher, preacher of the word of God, a great businessman, family man, family woman, in Jesus' name. Can we end tonight's talk here? Tomorrow, by God's grace, day two of St. Paul Memorial Lectures, we are going to talk about who was St. Paul. <laughs> Amen. Especially before the, his call. We shall talk about who was St. Paul. Number two, we shall talk about his call. How was he called? Number three, we shall talk about his mission that includes five missionary journeys. He made five missionary journeys. We shall talk about them. His mission. What defined his mission? We shall talk about the virtues that were demonstrated in the life of St. Paul. What are the virtues? What are the traits? What are the characters that were dominant in the life of St. Paul? And how can I and you, how can you and I be part of this experience? We shall talk about the imitation of St. Paul. How can I and you imitate St. Paul? Like you see St. John the like all these great saints that imitated Paul, like St. John Chrysostom, St. Saint, Saint Jerome, Amen, St. Ambrose, St. Augustine, many of them, Amen, St. Timothy, St. Titus, St. Luke, St. Mark, all of them were who they are because of Paul. How can we live that life? Amen. How can we come out of our mediocrity, of our lukewarmness, of our weaknesses, of the life of being despised and counted as a loss to become influential people everywhere. That when you talk, people will listen. We shall talk about that. We shall lastly talk about the martyrdom of Paul. How did he finally give up his life for the Lord? And much more. I have got many books once again to tell you, which we shall refer to. One of them is A Month with St. Paul. That is written by Blessed uh, James Arberion. J Blessed James who? Arberion. The founder of the daughters of St. Paul. That are all over the world. His ministry started with St. Paul. St. Paul's intercession. Special. We shall talk about. We shall refer to St. Paul. Our ancestor in faith. St. Paul our ancestor in faith. A small book. Very special in meditation. We shall also refer to Paul the Apostle and Martyr by Igino Giardi Giordani. Special book. How oh, I love it. We shall also talk about, refer to Saul turn to Paul. And I also have a DVD, by the way. A movie about Paul. Paul from Tarsus to Jerusalem. I have it. It's very special. We shall also watch it, maybe. I don't know how we shall do it, but we shall 
get away of watching it. Amen. So I thank you so much for tonight's program, for being here with us, having denied yourself many things, many luxuries, to be here and watch day one of our memorial lecture with St. Paul. And we have been blessed. And I know St. Paul in heaven is smiling down at you. He's smiling because of you. And he's going to pray for you. He will pray for your family. He will pray for everyone that you are connected to. I know what this guy has done to my life. That is why my family is a Pauline family. Even my wife is called Paula, which is Paul. A feminine for Paul. For Paul. And I didn't even give her that name. God gave it her. Because he knew I loved St. Paul. My children are Paul and Timothy. Two of the greatest apostles. Pauline apostles. Paul himself and Timothy whom he recruited. And many other things that the Lord has done in my life. Through the intercession of St. Paul. Many of them I can't imagine. I can't count them. I can't even tell them to finish. He's special. Amen. Even this ministry that I'm just doing right now. It is because of him. He gave me this ministry. He interceded before the Lord that I may be a preacher. I may be an evangelist. I may take the word of God all over the world. I have moved in many countries preaching the word of God. And I know I will still move because St. Paul is, is, is right at my back, covering my back. May he cover your back too. May he intercede for you. May he, may he bless your life. May he watch over you. Amen. Let's just make this prayer and we call it a night. A prayer, praying for the intercession of St. Paul. Of St. Paul that is in this book. I have them, all these books, I have them in case you need a copy. We can get it for you. Amen. Let us pray. A prayer to St. Paul for your special needs. For my special needs and your special needs, then we close. So I will give you a place where you are, you are going to keep quiet. And then you tell St. Paul about your prayer requests as we give these talks. So St. Paul the Apostle, the prayer for special needs. Oh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Holy Apostle, you, with your teachings and with your charity, you taught the entire world. Look kindly upon us, your children and disciples. We expect everything. From your prayers to the Divine Master and to Mary, Queen of the Apostles. Grant, O Doctor of the Gentiles, that we may live by faith. We may save ourselves, ourselves by hope. And that charity alone may reign in us. Obtain for us, O Vessel of Election, docile correspondence to Divine Grace, so that it may remain so that it may not remain unfruitful in us. Grant that we may ever better know you, love you, and imitate you. That we may be living members of the church, the mystical body of Christ Jesus. Rise up many holy apostles, especially through this platform, through LSG ministry, through all who are going to watch this program, May you, O oh dear St. Paul, rise up many apostles, holy apostles in our families, our children, our spouses, our friends. May the warm breath, may the warm breath of true charity permeate the entire world. Grant that all may know and glorify God and the divine master, the way, the truth, and life. And Lord Jesus, you know we have no faith in our own powers. In your mercy, grant that we may be defended against every adversity through the powerful intercession of St. Paul, our teacher and our father. And to you, St. Paul, we ask you the following particular intentions. At this very moment, have something that you are asking St. Paul. It's going to surprise many of you and it's going to work wonders and miracles in you and you'll begin to believe in him, I tell you. You'll begin to know him more. You'll begin to love him more because he's going to surprise you. May you have at least three prayer requests that you make known to him or even more. 